Hey there everybody, welcome back to The Daily Kerbal, and today I thought that we would do something a little bit different. Uh, started us out in the vehicle assembly building, but then I decided better to showcase it this way. So, here's how our current space program infrastructure is working. Uh, not very well. <laughs> it's, it's good. It's pretty good. We got uh, one space station here, we got one space station here, which means that we're we're very nicely working towards our goal of having like inter uh this is not interplanetary as it will call it. this is so you know interplanetary travel between the moon and Kerbin. in order to do that properly though something that we're going to need is we're going to need a spacecraft that travels between Kerbin station and the the, the dinkelstein Kerbin station and the rocco max lunar station how though how are we going to do that and so for that reason, I decided that we're, we're going to have this, I think I elaborated this on this on a previous episode. We want a ship that lands here, a ship that lands here, and a ship that travels between the space stations. So today, because, you know, we pretty much already know what a, a spaceship is going to look like that goes up to the station and drops back down. It's pretty much like uh, uh, the, the, the Russian spaceships that uh, the Soyuz MSO-4s that are still running between the ISS are very indicative of the spaceship design that existed back during the space race. Uh, we're pretty much going to be using those before we start actively working on space planes. We don't have the right parts for that, I don't think. So for now, I thought that we would do something a little bit different today, and this is going to be an episode entirely focused on design. And when we're done with designing, we might even design a couple of ships right now. And then when we're done with it, I will choose the best of the ones that we designed, I will launch it, and we will permanently put the spaceship up into, uh, into, you know, curb and orbit and dock it at the space station. And that's going to be our crew transport spaceship. So let's see what we want it to be. Uh, the most obvious one is we could, of course, make it one that looks like this. But the idea occurred to me that we could actually use these uh, space plane parts, too. It's not something that we do very often. There's not necessarily a lot of point in doing it, but, you know. We, we also want our spaceships to be cool. We don't just want them to be functional. We come to the point where I think we can afford to put some level of emphasis on the aesthetics of our spacecraft. So. Let's take a little look at the mathematics, shall we? This capsule weighs 4.12 tons. This one weighs 1.03. This one is this is lighter than this one. So if I wanted to say have the same amount of crew capacity, how would I do it? Three crew, crew capacity would require one of these and one of these. This is one ton. So we can actually get the same crew capacity for less uh, weight, which is good. We don't need that. So the question is, do we want this one? And do we want a crew cabin on the back of this? Like so. Or would we rather, since we know we're going to have this, let's make this be the central piece of our spaceship. We could use this and then have one of these instead. It looks prettier, but if I have one of these on the front, and I can put a docking capsule on the front of it. it looks that looks pretty darn ugly. I'll, I'll 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 grant you, but it also makes it easier to dock if I have to fly straight at it. Whereas otherwise, I'm pretty much stuck placing a docking node somewhere on the top of this thing because we have not yet unlocked the the inline docking port, the one that opens up. But I actually feel like I like this one better. It's not that difficult for me to, to, to dock with the vertical docking port. It's just, and you know, I, I do actually want the spaceship to look good. This is gonna be our Mark I crew cabin. It's gonna carry three people. It's got one pilot. It's pretty good. And we might as well, as long as we we're doing, this is gonna be a permanent spaceship that stays up there. So we can put a group, a set of reaction wheels. This can either go here or it can go between the crew pod and the, and the uh, command pod. Where we put the control pod, uh, the control module is probably going to depend on uh, where the center of mass for the craft is. 
Now, uh, one of the tough parts, fuel. This craft is going to be somewhat airplane-esque. That's what it's going to be looking like. Something like an airplane out in space. Uh, we're not really going to need much more, I think, than the simple liquid fuel engine. But we might, we're probably going to want to put like a couple of those on there. So... We can actually, for the first time, use some of those... Uh, yeah, some of these. I don't think I've ever used this one before. be cool if I could actually finally... I, I don't think I've ever used this part. Alternatively, I could just add a Rockomax style adapter to the end of that and use Rockomax size engines. Give us better propulsion. But I think we might as well. So let's see how this would work. We put two fuel tanks on here like this. And then maybe add some... Because I know that this is going to wobble probably put some structural bits on the top of that to keep it nice and stable. And then we put the engines on the back of this. That is the uh, actual space travel part taken care of, just to ensure structural stability. Let's put some more of these on there. There we go. Takes away a little bit from its aesthetic, but not too much. What else are we going to need on this? Well, we're going to need electricity. Where would I put that? These things are too too small. So electricity will probably come in this in the shape of these thingies, like so. Can actually move them a little bit further inwards, so they're not looking as ugly out there. And then obviously uh, some solar panels, quite a few solar panels actually. Put some in these positions too, just to make sure that they always, they always, you know, there's never a surface on here that does not touch this, not uh, look toward the sun. We can still save, even if we don't choose not to launch this craft, we can still save it. Maybe one day we can improve on it if we have to. There, that's to make sure that we have all the electricity that we need. And then the other important thing that it's going to need, obviously, is control. So now that we, let me turn on the center of mass overlay. Yep, it's over there, so take the place tool again, place our control over there. It's going to give us a little added control over the spin. And then for some added control over movement, I'm going to want to put some monopropellant thrusters over there and over here. Like over here, I guess. That obstructs the command. And like that then. There. That covers these directions, it doesn't cover these directions. So, gotta put some of these over here. Like that, yeah, and then some of these down here. And then, obviously, we're gonna need something to fuel those. So, monopropellant fuel tanks. We don't have monopropellant up on the space stations, so if we run out of that, then we can't refuel it yet. That's got to be something that we remember in the future, that we're going to have to take extra tanks of monopropellant up to the space stations. Okay, I can turn this off. So this is one idea. It's not 
particularly pretty. It's also still missing its communication capabilities, so let's add that. One of those is enough. We also might want to put some headlights on there. Just, you know, while we're thinking of things. Change the rotation of those a bit. Make them actually look kind of like headlights. I'm gonna, oh boy, that's, uh, yeah. All right. Okay. I'm going to turn that off so that we can be a little bit more finite. Have them shine directly ahead so we see where we're going. There. So I'm going to designate this ship as the uh, cruiser concept mark one in case we choose to change it. Uh, inter stationary transport ship. All right. And then obviously we'd have to add some, we need to get a little uh, creative with the way we uh, implement the stages that launch this thing into space. It can be done though. And then once this thing docks up with the space station, I think these thrusters should be enough to get out there. But this one is, this one is a little bit of a finicky solution. So I'm going to start a new one. And then this is gonna be just, the simplest one that I can think of, right? Doesn't need a heat shield, doesn't need for parachutes, doesn't even need a stack separator. This one is actually going to want plenty of fuel though. Thrusters. Our propellant fuel tanks. So this is a, a much simpler spacecraft. It's simpler for several reasons. First of all, it's a lot easier to get out into space than that other one. I feel like trying to launch that other one would cause a lot of trouble. It is a bit heavier. And let's, let me just take a look at this. Considering that the other one has, like the fuel pod, this one is 18 tons. This one is 4.5. Two of these, but this one, it's okay. So, First thing, this one carries 1,400 units of fuel at the cost of 18 tons. This one carries, uh, so the two of these would carry uh, 720 at the cost of nine. So this, these two are literally half the amount of fuel that this is, right? Because this is nine, nine times two is 18, 720 times two is one, four, one, uh, 1440, right? 
1,440. So this is exactly twice as much fuel as two of these. The capsule, on the other hand, as we determined, this is uh, that's 128 plus, I believe this was one. Yeah, so that's 228 versus it's half, half the weight. So technically we are kind of carrying not, not entirely half the weight, a little bit more than half the weight, but the other one is, the other one is carrying uh, half the fuel, but it's also got half the weight at the top of it. And the last interesting thing that we need to take a look at is the engine itself. This one in VAC does uh, 60 kilonewtons worth of thrust. This one does 250. And again, uh, the weight ratio is... So this does about 250, this one does 60. So uh, this does the same thrust as four of these engines. So this is essentially literally twice the spacecraft in every aspect. The weight to fuel to thrust ratio is probably the same. This is not hard math, by the way. This is me just taking a look at the numbers and making assumptions. It feels like like we're pushing twice the weight, but with uh, twice the thrust and twice the fuel. So I honestly don't know which spacecraft is better. I might just end up launching both of them up there. But I guess now we kind of have to come to the decision. This is going to be called the, uh, the Freya Cruiser, Mark One. Freya class vessel for extended service in outer space. All right. But this one is definitely a lot easier to launch. That's for certain. May even be easier to control. So ultimately, I think no matter how cool... Yes, save and continue. No matter how cool this, uh, this cruiser concept looks, let's take a look at some of the statistics of it, shall we? This one is uh, 48 parts and 15 tons. Parachute missing, empty crew cabin, sure, we know that. None of those matter. And then uh, if we take a look at the Freya Cruiser, it's 26. So it's a bit less than half the weight. It's also smaller. Well... One day we might take that cruiser up into space, but for now, I do believe that this is going to be the one that makes it up there as our permanent spaceship. For now. And then eventually we're going to be able to get parts, we're going to be able to start designing new ships. So this is going to be it. I am going to work on launching this right now. I'm going to pause the recording, and uh, next time we're ready, we're going to I'm going to build another descent stage below this. Pretty much the same thing as I always do with a bunch of more fuel, a mainsail, and uh, we're going to put this up there and I'm going to complete a mission with it in the next episode. So yeah, give me a sec. Be right back when I manage to park this thing. Alright, and then to close this episode out, why don't we just bring this thing up to the Kerbin station. Uh, we managed to achieve orbit, did it pretty easily. Only used up a little bit of the fuel left in the uh, the, the Rockomax tank for the, the final sh uh, actual spaceship. And then this vessel is from now on going to remain up uh, in space for as long as we decide to keep it in commission. Now, there is the problem of now the fact that I, have, I brought a scientist with us, by the way, because I wanted to carry her out to the moon, to the moon station, where we wanted to keep her, but... Uh, yeah, we now have the problem that I'm not entirely sure how we can bring these bring these astronauts home. I'm going to have to hire another pilot, and there's only one other pilot who's currently waiting for uh, for employment, right? Back there in the Kerbal the, uh, thingy. So, 
yeah, that's we're probably gonna have to hire her. I think it was a her, right? We're probably gonna have to hire that uh, that particular applicant, and then we're going to have to conduct a series of flights throughout which we may perform one or several other moon landings. But anyway, uh, yeah, so you know the deal by now. I've explained this several times. It's not really much new that uh, needs to be said here. Basically, we're going to have uh, this ship traveling between stations. And that's probably what I'm going to do next time, is I'm going to pick up that particular Kerbal who was stranded in lunar orbit. And I am actually going to test out and see how the uh, fuel systems hold out. Can this ship reliably make it to uh, to the moon and back with its own fuel supply? Or does, am I actually going to have to start carrying out fuel to the lunar station too? Just to make sure that we have backups. ourselves with the docking port bring us into park and that will be the end of this episode there we go bring her in nice and easy Oh yeah, I also put a uh, uh, set of reaction wheels on the nose, just to be sure. Okay, perfect. There we go. Oh, I forgot to get rid of that. Well, we'll do that too. Here we are. The ship is docked with the station. And, well, we'll see where this takes us next time. Thank you very much for joining me, everybody. Our space program is starting to look very, very promising indeed. Very proud of what we've achieved so far. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.